Good day, my name is Dr. Bin Nebrim. I'm a medical doctor, public health physician, and health promotion specialist. Today, we are going to speak about crash helmet legislation in Nigeria. What next? Before we start the presentation, I would like to give a little background of where this fits in public health. Now, public health is the art and science of promoting health, preventing diseases, prolonging life, and improving the quality of life through the organized effort and informed choices of individuals, um, communities, right, and society. Now, there are different components of public health, like bio statistics, epidemiology, behavioral um, health, um, occupational health, mental health, and public health um, policy. Now, what really is public health policy? Public health policy are those laws, regulations, actions, and decisions that are implemented in the community or population in order to promote health and well-being in that community. So one of such um, legislation is the crash helmet legislation that seeks to prevent deaths due to um, road traffic injuries. So now we'll begin this presentation. In the course of the presentation, this is the outline, we are going to make a case for not just the clash helmet law in Nigeria, but its use adherence to this law. Why is it important? Why is it important? We'll make a case for it. And we're going to review the current crash helmet legislation in Nigeria. We're going to look at what's the effect of this legislation. And we're going to conclude under which we'll make a recommendation for we we'll now look at the reference list that helped us in developing these slides. Now, you can see a picture of an ROTI, a road traffic, in, um, actually a road traffic accident that was about to happen. And obviously, this um, passenger does not, um, is not wearing a helmet, um, most likely, and this is a, a, a quota road, it most likely have um, a road traffic injury. And one thing, the road traffic is one of the neglected public health issue in Nigeria. And it's something that is quite important because and there is a, there is a huge burden because, for example, in 29, uh, 2009, 41 out of 1,000 Nigerians were involved in road traffic injury, had road traffic injury, and there were about 200,000 persons that were killed that year due to road traffic injury. Other things to note about road traffic injury is that there is also a gender age disparity in which you have more cases in younger persons, in males than in female. And what really are the causes of road traffic injury? It's what uh, Labinjo, Ogoni, Uboko and Adewole in 2017 found out where they are mostly because of poor knowledge of things to do to prevent RTI and also um, wrong attitudes where people know and just do not want to do things like wear helmets or reduce speed or reckless driving. Now, there's evidence uh, you can see it by PASMO et al. and Haida et al. in 2010 and 2007 respectively that the use of uh, clash, crash helmet laws reduced road traffic accidents, injuries, and deaths by over 15 percent, and saving over 300 thousand dollars in low middle income countries, including Nigeria. Um, however, there is also an argument on the downside of the use of. Uh, uh, helmets like Fred Mann in 2014 suggested that uh, bike helmet helped to stimulate and escalate the Boko Haram in Nigeria. See, one thing in public health is when you're discussing, you have to put up a balanced argument so you're going to look at the pros and the cons because everything in life has an, a merit and a merit. So, when you're making a presentation in public health, it's always good to present 
both sides of the coin. If you see in most of the presentations, you would see I'll make a case for and I also put add something that is a case again so that the conversation will be balanced, the argument will be balanced. Okay, so this is it. But as you can see, this is not str a strong enough argument to prevent the enactment, enactment and the utilization of crash helmet legislation in Nigeria. So, what? Let's look at the current crash helmet legislation in Nigeria. Asogo in um, his 1980 article suggests that Nigeria began. Uh, legislating the use of crash helmet in 1976 um, with the crash helmet edict. Um, they also follow up decrees, laws, and legislation and amendment in 2004. The latest amendment was in 2012 to this uh, crash helmet law. The other other regulations and laws that also speak to crash helmet. So, for example, in Nigerian National Road Traffic Regulation 2012, Part 13, Section 140, 194C, reads, No person shall ride a motorcycle without wearing an approved safety helmet or carry a passenger who is not wearing an approved safety helmet. So, there is a law. There is a regulation. And also, if you look at the Nigerian Federal Road Safety Corporation Establishment Act, the Act of Law that established the Federal Road Safety in Nigeria, the road safety officers are mandated by law to arrest and prosecute motorcyclists in Nigeria riding without a crash helmet properly worn by both the rider and passenger but, uh, or, or put a fine of about 2,000 naira which is about 4 pounds. So there is actually a law that um, mandates the driver and the passenger of motorcycles to wear a crash helmet and Finds if people are not wearing it. Not totally effective modifying behavior in Nigeria. Some users prefer to wear paint buckets, I can see in that first presentation, pumping light calabash and pots. Why others refuse to use it? That is expensive, cause skin rash, and make them sensitive to black magic. So that's what Macklin finds in 2012. That whereas these laws are there, there's a, a, a resisting punishment. A lot of people still do not wear crash helmet in Nigeria because of the fear of that uh, it can cause skin rash that it's expensive to buy or that they can even some people have told that they can be <laughs> and susceptible to black magic or what we call in quote juju so so this has shown that yes there is a law there is a punishment but there are some limitations to the adherence of this law So, what is the effect of uh, uh, the crash helmet in Nigeria? They say before and after study in Nigeria showed a high wear rate but increased fatality, suggesting wrong wearing or as the case. So, I saw what I found in 1980 that people were wearing a lot, but then it was wrongly worn, so it was causing there were still high level of injury. You can see a picture. Of a serving governor not wearing a helmet with his supporters, not leading by example. However, there have been reduction in, in road traffic injuries elsewhere following legislation, but high compliance enforcement where kids success. So, what this slide is telling us is that yes, the law is important and it can reduce, but it, the law works if there is high compliance and enforcement. So we can see that in the case of Nigeria, as we looked as we reviewed in the previous slide, there is the law. There is also a law that proscri that uh, explains the penalty for not wearing. But then where the problem lies is one, it's poor enforcement and compliance, and also wrong use of this term, not wearing it well. So then let's see in a conclusion what at the recommendation so we need to enforce this law more and that enforcement should go around from the um, the very powerful in the society to the least 
powerful in the society. Everyone should be made to obey this law. There should be education on how to wear it properly. One of the reasons we found out. So health education is also a part of public health. And then behavioral uh, health behavior is also a part of public health. So there should also be some other behavioral health interventions. We can do incentives and others that would help change behavior or sensitization that over time will help to change the behavior. So those are the kind of recommendations we we are making based on our analysis of the crash helmet legislation in Nigeria, which we have found out that it's uh, effective, it can reduce RTI cases and deaths, but then there is case of non-compliance, poor knowledge and attitude and improper wearing. So that is our conclusion and the good thing is when you analyze public health issues, you will then identify where the gaps are and then profile initiatives and interventions. So this is the reference list that was used to um, develop this slide. Thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to receiving your questions and your comments. Bye-bye.